live from Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. This is your motivational, sensational, inspirational, educational, aspirational, international, keenly awaited, daily created, highly anticipated edition of the afternoon swing trading floor with your humble host, Jeremy Alexander Newsom, with another daily dose of mentally delicious brain food, reminding each of you to love life, live life, and trade it. What's going on, folks and friends? Fans and followers from around the world. Robin says happy Thursday. Albert says good afternoon. Matt says hiya. What's up, buddy? Clive says we are back. What an awesome day in the markets. Man, seriously. What a day. Jason says, what it do, baby boo? <laughs> Cabria. Oh man. How's it going, dude? He says, finally made it to get some time with you guys. Yes, so happy to have you here. This is great, man. Uh, Red says, how'd you do in the E-mini S&P futures? I did well. I did really well. I caught 20 points last night. Lita says, hooray for Tesla. Yes, indeed, Miss Lita Roberts. Absolutely. Very happy about that one. Um, Mitzi says, you're so funny. Hey, Matt says, can you promote me? Yes, I can. All right. Well, pretty much what I'm going to do is just talk about some stuff. Oh, there's Rick from Detroit. Rick, since I can never pronounce your last name, you're just Rick from Detroit. <laughs> That's just your name, man. But I appreciate you being here, dude. Thank you so much. Always a privilege to have you here. Sochi. Oh man, Sochi. How did you do today? Felicia did great. A lot of people did really good today. Let's talk about it. This was a, a day that had movement. That's really all I want in the market. I just want a day that has movement. This was a, a bearish candle gapping down. So that was a retest gap and we never stopped retesting. I mean, we just kept on going. Kept on surging. So we gapped down last night on the S&P. We opened, so here's the five minute chart, and really most of this move came in the last hour of the day. And we're gonna continue up again tomorrow, which is an interesting thing. But here's the, uh, this is actually the retest. So if you played the retest on the SPY, which I didn't, but you could have, this is the retest right here. That's it, so that's the retest of the retest gap for the day trade, and this is the rollover. So obviously, as you know, if you're playing shares or the S&P or puts or something else, uh, that's easily some solid amount of money right there on the SPY. That's a really, really beautiful rollover, great retest. And then once that happens, uh, we popped and broke and we came over here and then we double bottomed. I mean, this spike went bananas, really big volume. And once we closed, who can tell me what type of high wave candle? Oh shoot, I gave it away. <laughs> Who wants to tell me what type of candle this is right here? Yeah, nice little high wave candle, exactly. So it closed above there, really good close, nice little retest, pretty solid level. And uh, once it closed above there, you know, it did what high wave candles do, boom, boom, and boom. My favorite candle. Looking good, trading good, acting good, smelling good, feeling good. So the bull trend is still continuing from here. Uh, here's the cues and the cues continuing from here. I mean, we're gonna have a strong bullish day tomorrow. The Dow Jones, massive candle. IWM, massive candle. So really, I mean, with Amazon gapping up, and you guys all know Amazon's gapping up, at this point in time, I'm assuming we either roll over, uh, sorry, let me rephrase. We either gap up a little bit tomorrow and just trade and have a nice down day, right? Because from all the buying today, all the buying comes in and then you, you have the sellers come in and that kind of thing. Or if we don't do that, then we just gap up and just keep on running. So it's one of those two things because we are gonna gap up tomorrow unless Amazon has some strong sell off afterwards. You know, unless that happens, we're just going to gap up and kind of keep on going. Maybe have a, some, some type of retest, but yeah, it's going to be interesting. Going to be fun. Pretty fired up about it. Let's go ahead and dive into some individual stocks and talk about everything. Just as a reminder, I'm flying out to Salt Lake City tomorrow. 
So tomorrow afternoon, you will be uh, presented by the wonderful works of Brad Reed and Blake Anderson for the afternoon room. Matt DeLong will also be here. Just want to give you guys some insight so that you can see how other people do stuff, get some other perspectives, hear another voice other than mine. I don't want you getting tired of me. And, you know, just give you a little bit of an alternate perspective. And I'll be rocking out the room next week from Salt Lake City. And then I fly to Hawaii on Thursday. And then I'll be broadcasting from Hawaii for two weeks. And then, you know, just a good life. So anyway, Q's doing its thing. Awesome. It's going to be fun tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be a really, really great day. What I want to do is just go ahead and dive into some of the official swing trades that we have set up since um, we're together. Since we've traded, Rick says, I gambled 20 shares on Amazon, a lot better odds and results than the Super Bowl. <laughs> you know, what's funny. A lot of people did that and we're going to talk about it, but I've gotten like nine or you know, nine or 10 text messages because obviously, you know, one share of Amazon is relatively premiumly priced, but you don't have to buy like a thousand shares to make money. You can buy, I mean, shoot, you can buy one share and you made $200. You know what I'm saying? So we'll talk about it. Absolutely. But before we do that, I just want to review some of the swing trades that we've placed since we had the free week open. That's what I want to do right now. So PRTY is still open. Party City still open at 298 with a stop loss at 256. And that's really it. So that one's still open. And uh, we'll see if we cancel it. We'll probably end up canceling it next week if we do cancel it. But, you know, that's looking okay. I do want to look at Datadog, even though this was not a trade that we placed during the free week. It is one that I talked about on Monday, and it actually did trigger, would have triggered on Tuesday. So if you saw it, we heard about it, we talked about it, we've been looking at this one for the last few days. There are a lot of people in Datadog, and it is rampaging. Rampage Jackson, 4788 is the next target on Datadog. So that was the, that was the nice winner for the day. Really, I mean, that was a beautiful, beautiful move. So Datadog is doing its thing. The next one is Peloton. So Peloton, this was from the weekly options newsletter that I emailed out. And it's trying. You know, I mean, I can kind of dig that candle. It's not a terribly upsetting, awfully horrific, scary, or bad candle, I don't think. You know, so if we can do something really cool from here and kind of if we can close above the high of that candle, it should be nice. I mean, next week is earnings, so we'll be getting out of that position next week, uh, realistically. But at this particular moment in time, you know, if we can get, get a little bit of love on that one. Implied volatility is 81%, so we'll just kind of see what she does. And hopefully it can take out the high of that candle and uh, make some new highs, but we will be exiting that one next week. So again, I hope a lot of you are able to join us for next week, if anyone wants to, if you're still on the fence, let me know. Talk to anyone in the chat pane. Uh, ooh, yes, let me definitely, definitely talk about iRobot today. All right, so that's Peloton. The next on the list is CRNC. CRNC, and this one did trigger today, kind of right towards the end of market. Right, so we're just trying to buy a pullback, and we did. So technology software company bought a dip. It's a bearish candle. Are we going to get stopped out tomorrow? Probably. I get stopped out of about like 50% of my trades. So that's why I wanted to buy a pullback. <laughs> you know, buy low, sell high, that kind of thing. It's, it's a low level. We just made a new high. Volume increased. Our stops below the moving averages. You know, the weekly chart, eh. It's a newer IPO. I get it. There's obviously some risks in trading this a stock like this, but that's why you have stop losses. Uh, I do like the pullback, and let's see if it can bounce tomorrow. If we have a nice up day, maybe CRNC can work out. Maybe it won't. I don't know, but that one did trigger. Here is Etsy, ticker symbol ETSY, and Etsy on the daily chart almost triggered. Uh, it does look nice. It, again, we have a few traders who played it a little differently because this was the hammer candle. So a few people are just in based on that hammer entry above there, stop right there. And we are actually gapping up a little bit post-market on Etsy. So that's nice. You know, we'll see if it continues to go higher. 
we'll find out what it does, but that's really not that bad. And, you know, we'll see what it does and all that kind of good stuff, but that's Etsy. And the next one was Momo, M-O-M-O. And, you know, at least it got down and didn't stop us out in one day. So I like the candle. We'll see if it bounces. And that's all I can say on Momo. Uh, I thought we were going to get stopped out for sure this morning. I was like, yep, well, there's Momo. Momo's coming to stop me out, but it did not, at least not yet. And, you know, we'll see if anything else cool happens from there. So those are just some really quick reviews. Uh, the other one that I talked a lot about yesterday, LAUR, well, technically I'm already gonna win the bet, but I'll keep winning it as she keeps going higher. So yesterday I said 100% chance this one will go higher. Well, it's already up 2%. So nice, buying the dip, really good retest. Gorgeous, right? There's the highway, there's the upper shadow, upper high of that candle. High was 2090, the low of today, 2082. Mm, it's not bad. So LAUR, Laureate Education, doing its thing. That's the one I talked about just yesterday. If you're already up 2% on that one, congrats. Lyft, L-Y-F-T. So Lyft, earnings around the corner. And a few people were asking me how to play uh, earnings on Lyft. You know, here's the thing, what I'm thinking about, is if you want to play Lyft, I actually really like this resistance level right here. And I'm kind of keeping an eye on this resistance price. If Lyft gaps up, this would be a inverted head and shoulders pattern. And I would want to probably buy a little bit more time because it's really not that expensive. I think you could do a 55 April call option uh, for $1.50 or $1.40. 55 April, which is right here. So again, let's just say hypothetically, right? Lift gaps up and it gaps up to like 52. We'd probably retest and then bounce. And uh, it could, right? If it has a really good gap, just run to the moon and you'd have a nice amount of time for not a massive, massive investment. So April 55, you know, on lift with the cap up, it's not horrifically or awful. So just something you could consider. Okay, uh, that's pretty much it. Next on the list is American Airlines, ticker symbol AAL. And American Airlines, the past two or three days, a lot of people have been asking, hey, Jeremy, is this a good buy spot down here on American Airlines? My reply has been, yes, it is. This was the hammer candle on Monday. We got a close above that hammer candle e Tuesday, and we retested that open today. I talked about the option, uh, the trading American Airlines. The option that I discussed on that one was buying the January 20, 2000, sorry, the January 2022 $35 call option. That's the one that I talked about not too long ago uh, on American Airlines. I think that's still a viable opportunity and choice that you can trade, obviously entirely up to you. But buy low, sell high on American Airlines. I mean, yeah, it's down here. It is down. I, what I really like about it is the fact that it broke this low. And uh, John, I know you're a Southwest pilot and I prefer Southwest over American Airlines any day of the week. But uh, for anyone who does fly American for whatever reason they would do that dumb thing, then, <laughs> then uh, you know, this is a buy low, sell high area. So Peter says, is the 100, 200 MA moving average consideration only for a short-term trade, not really for a long-term trade? Because a long-term trade, you're gonna wanna, you're planning on being in this one at least a few months. So long term, you're gonna you're gonna be buying it and just and practicing and holding because it's it's down low. It is a little bit of a channel. I love the fact that it just barely, barely, barely broke this stop. So for a short term trade, sure. Long term trade, mm, not really. Wouldn't sweat the long terms that much. Uh, and again, you know, if you are short term trading it, you can do all kinds of stuff there. Quick in and out, little target here and there. Maybe short for some day trades, something like that. Swing Trader says, just like you, Jeremy, just closed my 10th rental house today. 
That's Fabian, isn't it? Or is that not Fabian? I don't know if that's Fabian, but if it's not Fabian, congrats. If it is Fabian, congrats. <laughs> oh, it's Victor. Hey, almost. So the reason I was saying that, uh, Victor, I have another buddy of mine who's really big into real estate, residential. Uh, his name is Fabian. He's closing on some real estate, some, some properties down in Miami uh, this week. So, hey, man, congrats. That's awesome. That's a beautiful, beautiful job. Get that passive income. I love it. 14 to 18% cap rate. Ooh, good job. Nicely done. Scott says, if you or he wants to buy eight or more, let me know. I'll let you know right now, man. I love commercial real estate. Bring it up, bring it up. This is a wealth generating community, folks. A wealth of information. Scott says, this is residential. Uh, okay. Well, Scott, you and, uh, you and Victor can chat. <laughs> um, Tilray. So Tilray is just kind of chilling. What I created here is just like a drawing of just watching. I'm keeping an eye on Tilray. So far, nothing has really happened. We're still trading sideways and just kind of figure out uh, what it's doing. So we got this like support resistance here. I mean, you're, you're just really chilling out a little bit. So I don't have anything on Tilray. I'm kind of keeping my eyes on it, but that's pretty much it. So not, not a lot on Tilray, just kind of watching and waiting. Don't have anything on that one. Caterpillar, CAT is, uh, has earnings right around the corner. Cabria, for you, I can. For you, I will. So Caterpillar, uh, gap down, hit the 200. Earnings are hours away. And kind of interested to see what happens on Caterpillar over earnings. This is a fun looking candle. And my thought process is right now we're gapping up, but it's you know reporting earnings tomorrow. So we will see. I don't really know. I don't think I'm going to play uh, Caterpillar tomorrow on a day trade, most likely since I'll be in the air. But when I get to, when I, when I land in Houston, I'll have like two hours of a layover. So maybe I can take a trade at the airport. And by maybe, I mean, I probably will. So Caterpillar, it's a high wave candle out of support, ladies and gentlemen. So this will be a pretty fun thing. If it gaps down, cool. If it gaps up, cool. But realistically, I kind of expect Caterpillar just to hang out for a few days. This one could be a good iron condor tomorrow morning, depending on how it opens. So if you're interested in credit spreads, you could watch this one. I would consider something like, uh, I don't know, bear call spread. It just really depends on the expiration of the premium, but up here and over here, long-term iron condor for March, maybe, or even early April, you could get some premium. So I think Caterpillar is going to be stuck in the mud for a little bit, but we will see if anything else happens. All right, next on the list is VFC. And VFC, so what I looked at last time was a limit buy off of 80.53, and I'm trying to remember why I picked that price. Oh yeah, that was the 100 simple on the weekly adjusted for dividends chart, that's right. So if you adjust the chart for dividends, obviously this one doesn't pay a huge dividends, but the prices will change a little bit. Um, okay, so I didn't get filled on VFC at that price, so I'm gonna have to end up canceling that one. Ooh, piece of candy. This is gonna be fun tomorrow. I'm gonna watch this for a day trade. Friday, VFC. I know I'll be flying, so I won't be trading that much, but nice hammer, cute little upper shadow, high wave candle yesterday. We closed above this bearish candle. We're bouncing off of a long term average on a weekly. Hmm. That is swing that has quick day trade or quick swing trade written all over it. So feel free to watch VFC tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Next on the list is USC. What is this one? USC.
Uh, I don't even know what this is. I don't think it's that one. U.S. No, not U.S. Steel. Someone typed it. I might have just typed something in wrong. Probably did. I might have left off a letter. U.S. Concrete. U.S.C.R. Mm, man, I'm really interested that concrete has been as terrible as it has. You know, with the wall never getting built and nothing being used infrastructure-wise, realistically. A lot of people thought that it was going to be U.S. Concrete, American Steel, and no. <laughs> So they had the run up and they're like, wait a minute, this is never going to happen. And like, apparently they've just been selling off hard. So realistically, I'd probably wait to buy it, even though it's near or very close to the 100 simple on a weekly. Sorry, this is a monthly chart. Yeah, this is a monthly chart. You could buy a little bit because it does have a nice trend. So obviously it could bounce at any time. I would just put your pinky toe in, right? Pinky toe. You don't have to put your whole five toes, but just your, you know, Dabble, sprinkle a little bit of shares, three or four here, nine or 12 there, and then come back to it three or four weeks from now and see if you want to add to it. But I don't have any position in US concrete. We'll see what it does from here. NEO, the chosen one, ticker symbol NIO is down a little bit. And NEO, the high of today is 438. And we talked about yesterday an entry of about 439 by 383 and that's going to become an official swing trade setup so here we go neo swing trade let's see if this short term bull trend continues nice gap noise volume okay that wasn't too hard we looked at it Wednesday, we looked at it Tuesday, we looked at it today, we planned it since yesterday, and it looks okay. Noise. All right. So, throw that in here. One, 30, 2020, Neo. And again, we really don't have, that's the thing is we don't have that much risk exposure, 439, oops, 439, with a stop loss at 383. You could do options on this one if you want. I mean, if you do options on Neo, they're not really that expensive. I'd just go April or March, at least $4 call options. You know, kind of your, kind of your play on that one if you want to. It really would not be a very expensive trade at all. I think it's a great trade, actually, based on a perfect gap and go. Open because it's not triggered yet. And there you go. So we will see if it breaks above that price. But right now, NEO does not look bad. Okay, United. United. Hmm. I think I was talking about buying United the other day, but I wanted it to go lower. Oh man. Yep. 7321 is where I was thinking if you're going to play it, that's where I would play it. Red says, what's the target for Neo? I don't know yet. It hasn't been triggered, but normally it's about two times the risk. That's usually what I like to aim for, but I like to hold sometimes if it runs really nicely. I normally don't set a target initially. Just entry and stop. But if you want to set a target, two R's would be $5.51, red. So United, um, again, good gap down, good location, good hammer candle. This is a buying spot on United, in my opinion. I would prefer a bounce off of the 200 simple moving average because let's face it, it's never bounced off the 200 simple before, right, John Thaxon? There's never been a point in time in the past where you could have bought off the 200 simple on United. So that would just be a pure shot in the dark. No way we could have figured that it might do that again. So anyway, good gap, good hammer, depending on what it does. If you're looking at buying down here, it'd probably be a longer term position. Super, super short term, you could definitely get some love, but it'd be kind of quick. You'd be playing it somewhere in here, I think. Just a quick boom, boom kind of play. 
that's what I got on United. Smile Direct. There's a few people in Smile Direct, which I can I can appreciate. This was a very good swing trade that we took not too long ago, actually. So let's open this one up. This was a really nice swing trade. Again, I published this one to everyone who follows me on TradingView. Uh, all obviously everyone at Real Life Trading who's who wanted to play it, had access to play it, it was an official swing trade. Let me just pull this one up because it's a pretty trade. I'll put it in the chat pane too because I would love for each and every one of you, if you're wondering how to get just a little bit better at swing trading, I think it's a studyable chart. So Smile Direct bull trade. Only 175 people watched and looked at this swing trade. It's not nearly enough. So there you go, I'll post it in the chat pane. Uh, so this was, you know, this month, two and a half weeks ago. And I did say this openly to a few people. I was I told Matt and everyone, I was like, man, I really wish the RLT free room would have been at the early part of January. I was on what a lot of people would refer to as absolute fire. If I bought it, it was going up. I mean, I went up like seven, we were on seven. We were making stupid money in the first two weeks. <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah, that was insane. That was insane. So a lot of good trades, a lot of good calls early in the month. January has been an incredibly exciting month. And so far, honestly, it's ending very well. Ending very well. I feel like this week has been exceptional with earnings. I mean, Apple was up, Tesla's up. Amazon's up, Facebook's down, Google is around the corner. So, I mean, this is exciting. I feel like this is a fun, I mean, who doesn't have either Amazon or Apple, you know, in their broader, whatever. So this was the trade on Smile Direct. Boom, 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 and we exited up here uh, at three dollars and some change on Smile Direct. So, Right now, it's just in a pennant pattern, ladies and gentlemen. This is a perfect pennant pattern. Feel free to keep an eye on it. I mean, it is building pressure. And at some point, we we'll either break out and continue higher or pull back one more time and most likely continue higher. But this one's pretty good. Dustin says, since I don't day trade Fridays, today was my last day to trade in January with a total of 20.95 Rs. Got one more day of swing trading, but I'm sitting at 11.8 as well. Jeez, Dustin. Rock star status engaged, my man. Well done. Proud of you. Very proud of you, man. Thanks for being a part of the community. You've been an inspiring, fiery, motivated individual who owes me dinner or lunch in Lake Tahoe. <laughs> it's going to be an expensive lunch, man. Whew, I'm pumped about this. And we're going to hit some roulette wheels. Do they have roulette? I can't remember if they have roulette in, uh, in Lake Tahoe, or is it just slots? I'm going to be honest, man. The last time I was there, it was, it was a little, I was a little on shaky ground. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was a little, uh, you know, oh. <laughs> what's going on? I was there during the Patriots Falcons game, the Super Bowl. Man, I made a lot of money that day. Anyway, that was a fun night. That was a really fun night. Red says, Why do you have the 10, 20, and 50 on some charts and the 100 and 200 for some? I use them on both, Red. I just don't have them all on one screen because I feel like it's too clouded, too crowded. So I hope that answers your question. I have them on both. I just, I don't want to have all of them on one chart just because it just feels like a lot of lines, you know? Plus this particular chart, Red, started uh, three months ago. So there are no long-term moving averages yet. <laughs> That's the other thing. So this one started, you know, it hasn't even had a hundred days of data. So that's the other answer to that question. Clive says, <laughs> was Lake Tahoe earthquakes or alcohol? Uh, that was booze. Yeah. Yeah. That's when I was on my booze train. 
that's how that happened. All right, another swing trade set up, Sunrun Incorporated. This is going to be easy. Entry above there, stop below it. I don't think that even needs explanation. There you go, 18.02 by, we'll do 17.22 just to make it fun. And uh, there we go. Oh, I'll, I'll publish that one as well. Okay. New official swing trade. I love it. Simple as that. Now, here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, with a lot of these swing trades, many of them are going to take time to play out. So they might not fully like hit targets and work out and do whatever they're going to do for the next, I don't know, week or two. So I'm just letting you know, if you, you know, a lot of these trades start working out and you're like, man, I want to sign up for real life trading to do it in two weeks. It will be a hundred percent more expensive than it is right now. I'm always serious with the price thing. Like Monday market open is going to right back to where it was. So you're getting a, you're getting a 50% pullback on Apple right now uh, on the prices. Just a small little FYI heads up tidbit. So again, a lot of these swing trades, they might not play out, you know, right now because it's, you know, they're swing trades. Someone once told me there's only five trading days in a week. I was like, man, you know, that, that seems, that seems right. 1722. Uh, again, I love this trade. Perfect gap and go. And it's open because not triggered yet. Red says, got it. Awesome. All right. Smile direct. That was a great trade. Oh, who was talking about Max R? Peter? <laughs> Max R. Look at this. Look at this target on Maxar, Peter. I mean, I'm telling you, man, I don't know how or why or what happened to get lucky in the month of January, but it happened a little bit at the beginning. Like that was blink. I mean, Maxar was brilliant and had a put sale expired on Maxar as well. Mm. Mm -hmm -hmm. That was nice. Peter says, so Monday at 8.30 Central. Oh, you're going to wait to the last minute? <laughs> I'm going to have to pause the trading room to get you into the room? Dang. Uh, Jennifer says, what did we say about NEO? I'm just going to have to send you the chart. Jennifer, I will have to send you the chart. There you go. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, next on the list, uh, CGC. CGC still does not look bad. I think this one could start catching some bids. The thing is, earnings are just, eh, they are kind of right around the corner, aren't they? Yeah, they are just right around. I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait on CGC because we're, we're already in Aurora Cannabis. All right, here's ACB. They're, we're already in this as an official swing trade, and it's just it's just taking its time. Really kind of just muddling along. We were up almost a full R on it, and I didn't sell, and I should have, but uh, I guess I'm just kind of waiting. I was waiting for something, something great, and it just didn't quite happen. So long story short, um, yeah, we're in. We're hanging out, we're gonna keep holding. Let's see if it bounces. Adam says the Ontario government messed it up again. Come on, Ontario. Pam McQuid says, how much is the swing trading room? Uh, that's a valid question. What time is it 4.35? I know we have a webinar coming up in 25 minutes. Uh, let me just do this. If this is easier for everybody. So it's a really good question, Pam, and it does deserve an answer. This is what I've been mentioning to a lot of people. Um, just, you know, in, in recent days or recent hours, if you want to be a part of the RLT community and you want to be in the afternoon room and or the morning room, uh, or both, right? So normally it's 27.95 a year. 
And again, when I was talking about a 50% discount, right now it's $19.95 a year. If you want the afternoon room, the morning room, and the weekly options newsletter, which is pretty much everything we have. So this is the last time verbally you're gonna hear me talk about this. And if you want it, Matt will post, Matt just posted the link in the chat pane. If you want just the afternoon room by itself, it's $12.95 a year. But you can click on that link and purchase whichever one you want. It's $199 a month. If you are good at math, and all of you are, if you do $199 a month, uh, you'll figure out pretty quickly that you're gonna spend more than $12.95. So it's like, you know what, just get out the way, rip the bandaid off, $12.95. I mean, that shouldn't be too bad. My P&L on the day was $957.36 is what I'm looking at right now. So on the day, I almost did the year promotion. Wait a minute, I don't know if you guys believe me. Oh shoot. All right, that's fair. Okay. Okay. Let me do this really quick. I don't want to just say that. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Type it on one if you can see my face. I just want to make sure you guys can see. Okay. Okay. No, that's fair. That's fair. I had some people in the, in the chat pane, so they didn't believe me. That's okay. All right. Let me do this. Mm -mm -mm. Is that readable, Matt Long? I can't tell. It's a little blurry. It's small. Uh, I'm just making it closer. That's it. Nine five seven three six P and L on the day. I'm just letting you know. I mean, I wasn't. I'm not making it up. Don says, Jeremy, you almost made a thousand dollars a day, but you can't afford a razor. <laughs> Dude, growing it out for the lady, my man. You know, Ashley loves the beard. Don, <laughs> what Ashley likes, Ashley gets. You know, it's just one of those things. She likes me looking all wildebeest. So, anyway, Thomas said, "Should we ask her that?" <laughs> no, don't ask her. Just take my word for it, dude. Come on. Anyway. Scott says, who's Ashley? Your puppy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. That's the, uh, that's the person who makes all this RLT stuff work behind the scenes. All right. She's my fiance. Yeah. I know, I know you're kidding, Scott. I know. I know, dude. By the way, I, I'll never take offense, guys. You can, don't worry about me. Offense will not be taken. It is all good. MasterCard. Whoo, look at MasterCard. Man, somebody asked about MasterCard. I think it was yesterday. And they said, Jeremy, what should I do? And I was like, be bullish, buy the dip. High wave candle, good bounce, good trends, looking saucy. I don't have any positions on MasterCard at all, but it looks delightful. Uh, trend is bullish. Be bullish. MasterCard and Visa, like some of the strongest companies I've ever seen as far as stock charts go. I mean, it's like they haven't even gone down at all. You had, you had a bloop. That was it. Bloop. Bloop, 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 bloop. Nothing else other than up. Unreal town. MasterCard doing its thing. Roku, R-O-K-U. Uh, I really want Roku to pull down into the 200, but it might not. It might not quite get the, to the 200. That's why I wanted to sell a put. And I don't really want to own shares of Roku yet. So I'm just going to keep waiting for this put sale. A lot of you have put sales on Roku. Amazing. The one I did uh, early January, I think, is perfect for me. So I am okay with that. I dig it. I'm all about it. I think it's cool. So I'm just going to say, hey, if you want to own shares of Roku, great. I think Matt has a killer collar on Roku right now. 
and the put sales have been working good. So yeah, it looks nice. Trim looks nice. Thumbs up all around. Not bad. PSNL. Personalius. This is the one I was looking at yesterday. I have no idea what this thumb thing. I need to. What is this? Gosh, I feel like I could do this room nine hours a day. I just love looking at stock charts. I got 20 minutes. PSNL. Sales. Uh, oh, what is this, Matt? What is this? What's going on right here? What is this 95%? Is this me in gym class getting 95% on tests? Holy wow town, that is some sales. That's all we really got. Short flow, only 4%. Institution, 76% of people own this thing. Not a lot of revenue. Um, what is it? Biotech. Mm. Matt says, uh, it's a smaller company. 60 million revenue. Hey man, how can, can we get 60 million in revenue at, at some point? <laughs> uh, is that possible? You know, this really doesn't look that bad. Let me look at earnings. This could be one that could just fly really quickly. So Red, when you're talking about setting a target, this would be one I probably would set a target on. According to Thinkorswim, earnings are on March 11th. Can anyone else verify that for me? Rick says, Jeremy made 950 bucks and Bezos made 3.2 billion. Dude, I know, it's a travesty. Straight up travesty, my man. <laughs> I need to get on that Bezos level. Serena says, March 11th and Robin Hood. Okay. Yep, I'm gonna set this one up. Let me just look at the extended hours really quick. Mm -hmm. 81 by 51. High, it's gonna be a little bit of, a, that's a high risk, high reward. It's a biotech, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna throw a target here, and I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of pre-fill the targets on this one. So this will be target one for 25%. This is target two for 14.7%. The rest. Andrew says, Tasty Works has 212 after the bell and Trading View has 225. So it's, it's kind of all over the place. PSNL. High risk, high reward. Um, verify earnings. Don says, it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. Yeah, man, I feel like I would still be able to keep some money if I made $13 billion in a day though. <laughs> you know, I feel like I could squeak out a win. If I just, if I pulled what Jeff Bezos pulled today. But you are correct, my friend, you are correct. All right, another swing trade. One, 30, 2020, PSNL. And 1181, 1051 shares. Uh, again, high risk, high reward, I think, based on a retest gap. Open is not triggered yet, and we'll throw that in here. Okay. Again, there we go. There we go. All right. PSNL. I'm going to set that up later tonight. Next on the list, uh, Tesla. Not much to talk about on Tesla, right? I mean, it's just, you know. No big deal. This morning, you know, before market opened, I said the Tesla was going to close almost exactly like that candle, and that's pretty close. 
That's really, really close. So Tesla, I mean, it's, it's not bearish, I guess is what I'm trying to get at. Do not be surprised if Tesla gaps up again tomorrow. I'm not gonna spend tons of time on this, but here's what I will say. Based on just pure candles, it has more room to go. It's getting to a little bit of a spot where it needs to slow down, but this was a multi-year distribution right there. And then it had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven months in a row of just straight up gangbuster gains. Then it pulled back and then it had another higher high. One, two, three, four, five. That means we technically could go two more months up. So what, get into 700, 800? I mean, it's, it's possible. And then we have a big pullback. Whatever pullback we have on Tesla, however large, I'm buying it again. I'm playing Tesla bullish again. They're more than a car company. I've been bullish on them for a while. You guys all know that. And that's really it. So don't bet against Tesla. I did look at a short today. That is true. The rumors are factual. I looked at the chart and, and set up a short, but it did not trigger. So I canceled it. And that was that. Um, the first short I looked at was getting in short right here. So there with the stop up there, that was short number one, which actually would have worked. Short number two was in here somewhere and it just never, just didn't break down. So I just, I canceled it. So bottom line is I never triggered it. Never triggered in, didn't do anything. A lot of people have lost a lot of money betting against Tesla and good for them. I'm glad to take their money. I'm glad to give money, I'm glad to take money, I'm glad to make money, I'm glad to provide money. But right now, I'm not betting against Tesla. I mean, just let it keep doing its thing. Be bullish. And obviously, it'll have a drop at some point. And then when it does, you know, maybe I make some money on it if I see a signal. But right now, I'm going to wait. PayPal. I love PayPal. This analysis was straight up money. So we talked about this one a few weeks ago, actually. I said, I'm bullish on PayPal on Q1 and Q2 unless PayPal gaps below 106 on earnings. So it got down, threw in some massive, massive lower shadows post-market, and then just got bought up. Type in a one if you did not know that PayPal owns Venmo. If you did not know that. Most of you probably do know that, but they do own Venmo, and a lot of people own Venmo, and a lot of people use PayPal. So bottom line, PayPal will go higher. It's a very strong company. You know, they're, they're doing great. Since we're looking at, you know, Finviz, it's interesting to see, but PayPal does bring in some income. They do that. Sales quarter to quarter. Oops, what did I just do? I don't know. Wow, there's a lot of ones. All right, well, that was worth the price of admission today. There you go. Sales quarter to quarter, 18%. Gross margin, 45%. Sales, 17 billion. Hello, income. 2.5 billion. Price of sales is only 8.8. .8. Not bad. Short flow is weak. Target price, 128 by whoever. I don't know. Um, it's good. I know how PayPal works. If you ever work with me in coaching or anything like that, um, oftentimes I generally bill with PayPal or do invoices. I like PayPal. It's good. Don says PayPal also owns Zoom, I believe. Ah, they might own some piece of Zoom, but I don't know how much of Zoom they own. Because Zoom is another public company. So they might own pieces of it, yep. I don't know their ownership. If they have some type of, you know, round one or a, a, the A round, I'm not entirely sure. That's speculative for me, but if that is true, let me know. I would love to know that. That would give me even more reason to like PayPal. But Zoom is also quite nice. You're using Zoom right now, by the way, folks. This is the company that you're using to listen to my voice at the present moment in time. I am a little bit bullish on Zoom. I have no position on it right now, but I would like to get a little bit, uh, start tiptoeing into it. It looks pretty good. It's a buy low, sell high. Good company, know how it works. So Zoom is a fun one. All right, 
Uh, APPS. How did someone request this one? Ooh, it's coming down into a good support. Matt DeLong, you got it, buddy. Thanks for letting me know. So APPS, the good news is, even though I didn't trade this one, it was up into this region. I had a trader ask me about it. I said, hey, this is a great place not to go long. So even though I didn't personally play it up there and make any money on it at all, it is nice to see that it's pulling back, good gap down, retesting the support resistance. And uh, yeah, kind of cool. That's really it on APPS, digital turbine, not too shabby at all. Bottom line, wait for it to pull back a little bit more before you buy it. Uber, U-B-E-R, Uber is down and I don't think I wanna take this particular trade before earnings because I know earnings are next week. All I can say on Uber is I'm bullish if they gap up and bearish if they gap down <laughs> on earnings, as far as like a day trade is concerned. Best case scenario, if you're looking for a flyer, which means like an option trade that could increase in value, you most likely are gonna, you'd wanna play Uber and Lyft either in opposite directions or the exact same direction. You either wanna hedge it or double down. And I would say a call option for April is probably not gonna be that expensive on Uber. April, oh, they don't have April, so it only has March. Okay, so a March 40 call option would be a dollar and 20 cents. That's not bad. So March, you got some time, it's over earnings. You know, if Uber gaps up to here, it will absolutely trade up to 41. And with the trend, it's anything's possible at this point. So we'll just kind of have to wait and see. See what it do, but the trend is not bad. All right, so I got a few more to go. Bosch Health Systems, Bosch Health Company, BHC, used to be the old Valiant Pharmaceuticals. This one's important to keep an eye on technically. The technical charts are showing a breakout and a retest, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone and their mom can see your consolidation, you can see the breakout, and you can see that it's working on a retest. I don't personally have any position in this one and I won't have any position in it. I just don't like, don't know how they make money. I haven't really studied the company that much, but based on this sell off, I mean, they are accumulating and based on the pure Dow theory, we can start going higher on Bosch. Very, very nice evening star reversal pattern though. Very pretty. Hunglao says, for options, maybe play Lyft on Uber earnings and play Uber on Lyft earnings to avoid implied volatility tax. Shoot, that's a good idea. I like it. Thank you, Hunglao. By the way, man, thanks for being so awesome. Appreciate you, bud. Uh, good evening, Star on BHC. And yep, I mean, that's pretty much it. I would be looking at keeping an eye around this 26 ish dollar region uh, to buy some dips longer term if you want to play Bausch. InBev, a lot of people have been requesting this one. I don't see it, but I'm also not the greatest slippery slope trader in the world. A lot of people love picking bottoms and a lot of people are trying to pick the bottom on InBev. I don't think it's gonna happen. But, you know, that's just me. That's just my speculation taking over. Sure, I mean, it's definitely worth watching, but right now, it's just going lower. I don't have any position on InBev, and if they bounce, good volume, good gap, or something, it's worth it, but right now, nah. Baba, whoo, B-A-B-A. So again, long-term, nice little bullish trend. I'm so happy they're pulling back and best case scenario, you can buy Bob at 185 at some point. I'll go ahead and I'll let you in on a secret. I heard that Bob is having an earning, uh, a stock split mid-year next year, so like June, July. That's the rumor. 
And if they have a stock split, I'm going to let you all know what I'm going to do on BABA. Uh, I expect it to trade higher into the split. After the split, obviously, probably trade back down. And then I'm going to buy as much BABA as I can afford. So letting you all know that now, about a month or so after the split, if BABA trades down after the split, I will buy a th three or 4,000 shares. I'm going to load the boat. Boat will be loaded. So just throwing it all out there. It hasn't happened yet, but just letting you know. Write it down. I like to make money. Space, S-P-C-E, Virgin Galactic, also known as SpaceX to the noobs out in the world. Trend, finally calming down a little bit. Don says, don't sink the boat. I will not. Boats never sink, my man. John says, how do you know about upcoming splits? Can't give you all my secrets, bro. <laughs> man, it was, just, it was just a news article on CNBC. <laughs> uh, I read it on Twitter, man. I'm not special, I promise. I just, I read it somewhere. But it seems like it's in the works. Again, we'll see. Maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't. They don't always occur. So Space Galactic. Virgin SpaceX, if it breaks out of here, be bullish. I know Matt's gone, but we had a discussion in the, at the very, very beginning of January, January 3rd or 4th, and we went on a nice little run together, and he said, hey, Jeremy, give me a list of five stocks that you think will double in 2020. This was at $11, and I said SpaceX. No, that SpaceX is a joke. Virgin Galactic, SPC. So we still got a little bit room. To, we can still got a little bit ways to go, but yeah, this is a sleeper. Not a lot of people are talking about it. I like it a lot, and I do think I do like that trend. The trend is your friend, and right now you and your friend are hanging out, watching movies, and enjoying life together because that thing is pretty. TPX, Temper. Pedic. I'm I'm bullish on sleep, ladies and gentlemen. I'm bullish on sleep. Sleep number, Tempur-Pedic. We're starting to break out of a distribution and no one is talking about beds. What a boring industry, but it's about to get exciting. This is a long and strong swing trade slash investment. Mostly investment. Uh, I'll go ahead and give you some future targets. And as Don would say, feel free to look at this one pretty aggressively for a longer term purchase. If you have a Tempur-Pedic. TPX, watch for the full bull train. I love this close up here. Buy dips, be bullish. Don says, everyone needs a bed. You're not lying, my friend. That is a factual statement. And apparently, every human being also sleeps. Ron says, I've had a Tempur-Pedic for years. Nice. Where did you buy some shares, Ron? How did you use the market to pay for, those, to pay for that bed? Don't tell me you didn't. <laughs> I mean, buying it at 50 and selling it at, at 90? I mean, come on, man. But yeah, if you got a Tempur-Pedic, buy some shares, be an owner rather than just a consumer. Ron says, I wasn't smart, I wasn't smart enough. Now you are. Buy some shares, pay off that bed. All right, next on the list, it well, not to, not pay off. You've already paid it off, but you get what I'm saying. Don says PayPal owns XOOM, not ZOOM. Oh, you're spelling it phonetically. I got you. Yes, they do own XOOM. I should have known that that's what you're talking about. So this is the one that Don was mentioning is owned by PayPal, right? Sending money online, a PayPal service. I can't wait for Western Union just to go to zero. 
You know what I'm saying? The fact that MoneyGram and Western Union are even around still blows my mind. Snapchat, bullish trends, they're recovering, still losing millions of dollars a week, but some people don't care about fundamentals. Uh, the trend looks good, volume is coming in, excited to see what happens on earnings. I really would not be surprised if somehow Snapchat gapped up on earnings nice and largely and then faded, but uh, I'm going to buy some puts over earnings for Snapchat. 1750. Risking an R on some puts in case it gaps down. Even March 17 puts aren't that expensive. March 17 puts cost 70 cents. So that's not that bad. Pam says, how else will those scammers get paid without Western Union? <laughs> That's so true. That's funny, but yeah. So yeah, Snapchat, I'll just play it with puts over earnings just in case it gaps down. I mean, again, their fundamentals are deplorable. Okay, next on the list, Pinterest. Pinterest will double. I don't know if it's gonna be in 2020, but a doubling will happen and I'm just waiting for earnings, my friends. Best case scenario for Pinterest, we gap above 25 on earnings. That's best case. As long as it doesn't gap down below 17. If it does, I will lose thousands of dollars that day. Close to tens of thousands, actually. No, yep, yeah, tens of thousands. It'll be rough. And I'll probably have to buy some protection. Um, I might buy some puts, depending on the next two or three days, just to see what it looks like. Might buy a March nineteen dollar put. Yeah, I can actually buy a March nineteen. I'll buy a March nineteen put right now. Um, let's see, we do that March nineteen just to realistically uh, just protect myself in case it gaps down. You know, so spend a little bit of money on protection, and if it gaps down, okay. But if it gaps up, that's obviously best case scenario. So Pinterest, <clears throat> hoping for a gap up, gonna buy, just, just submit an order to buy $19 March puts for protection. All right, Boeing, I got 12 whole shares of Boeing. Don says, Jeremy, if you lose all your money, I rent out rooms and I'll save you one. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate that, dude. Very kind of you to offer me a place. Boeing. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's Boeing. It's going to go higher at some point. And I really, really love this hammer candle. So I'm just waiting for it to break above the high of this hammer. And I might even buy another share. Phillips says, option market is closed to buy puts. That is correct, my friend. It is a good to cancel order that will fill tomorrow. So I put it in my order hopper and it is waiting to fill tomorrow at open. Yep, thank you for the reminder, but you are absolutely correct. So Boeing, I honestly might even buy one additional share if it breaks above there. My goal, I've been buying shares down here and I'm gonna sell those shares at 372. So if Boeing can, you know, like I said, break above 328, let me go ahead and type that in and I will buy an additional share. Uh, just again, just tiptoe in. Let's go buy custom, edit. All right, just one. Just one share, tiptoe in. Okay, awesome. Next on the list is, what do we got? Micron, so Micron, ticker symbol MU. This is the weekly chart, gorgeous high wave candle. If Micron closes above the high of that candle, expect it to get to 65 real quick. Nice little hammer candle. Again, I love Micron long-term. It had a great bounce off of the 50 EMA, and that's a very pretty candle. So if we break above here, I would just relatively expect that to continue, honestly. 
and I dig it. It looks really pretty, cute, nice, and saucy. I like it. S S Y S. <clears throat> Man, it's just at it's at a really good support. I'm kind of surprised that this is taking so long to recover, but it sure is. Yeah, this thing is down, down, down. I mean, as it's down here, is it an okay time to buy low, sell high? Um, it's not awful. Yeah, it's not awful. You got a little bit of a bullish candle here. If it takes out the high of that bullish candle, $19, you know, you could look to play it long and let it run up a little bit higher. Otherwise, I would just kind of leave it alone and let it hang out. But again, if you're playing it, you know, you'd buy low, sell high. It is in a channel. I agree. And it's not a very expensive stock. I agree. And you could buy, I mean, shoot, if you bought a thousand shares at 19 with a stop at 18, you risk a thousand bucks. And if it runs up to 21, boom, you just made two grand. That's just math. So, you know, we'll see. Speaking of making two grand, here's 3D printing. And 3D printing got a thousand shares at 877. I got a covered call for February at 13 because I would not mind selling shares at 13. That'd be really cute, around a four grand win. Carrie says, what about the other class? It's going on right now, Carrie. And I'm, I'm doing as fast as I can to get there. But you can go ahead and log in if you would like to. So yeah, 3D systems, I like the chart, I like the candle, a little bit of an inside candle today. I like the exponential moving averages. I'm hoping it bounces, and if this cover call gets exercised, beautiful. If it doesn't, then I will protect myself over earnings, and I'll just do it again. Next on the list, LL, Lumber Liquidators. Wow, wow, Lumber Liquidators, oof. Just cannot catch a break. If you're gonna be buying it, this is the only place that you could or would or should or might. And that's all I got. Morning star reversal, volume is coming in, close above a high wave candle, buy low, sell high. I don't have any position in lumber liquidators, but if you do, I understand why you would, I get it. And yeah, I would just give that one some time and let it do its thing. But right now, not blown away by lumber liquidators. Okay, so these are some late additions. Baidu, B-I-D-U, so Baidu, mm, you know, not bad. Not bad, this analysis. Um, so just hanging out, looking at, doing its thing, I'm waiting and we're gonna find out what occurs on Baidu. But earnings is around the corner. I'm just going to wait. A few traders are buying leaps on Baidu down here. And I do not think that's a bad idea. I do love the volume. I love the gap. I love the candles. I love the trapping candle down here. So if you're buying some leaps, I'm all about it. I'm just going to wait until after earnings and then kind of find out. And I might miss the party. If I miss the party, then I miss the party. But We'll see what Baidu does and we'll give it a little bit of time from here. Nothing too crazy on that one. We'll be looking at earnings when it gaps. iRobot, mm, just slowly breaking down. Man, this is gonna trap a lot of bears if iRobot gaps up. I know there's also a lot of traders who are in this thing bullish. This is a stock that is still surprising me to this day fundamentally. I just don't know why it's not going higher, but. I guess that's okay. Um, yeah, I mean, best case scenario, the only way I would play iRobot is, you know, if you don't have any position in it right now, I would consider buying $60 call options on iRobot for February. You're only gonna spend $1.35, and if it gaps up above 58, which it could, it'd be a massive gap, but man, that thing would run to the moon. Otherwise, I just, I wouldn't do anything with it. 
because if it gaps down, it's probably going to get bought up again. And then, you know, if it gaps down, you probably just buy calls. It gapped down, got bought last time. It probably will gap down and got, get bought again. So we'll look at that a lot next week and kind of play it accordingly. I had a trader ask about GoGo. GoGo hammer at the 200. Mm, mm, mm. So this one is one that Matt has long term. I don't have any position on GoGo at all, but that is a gorgeous hammer. Entry right there, stop loss right there. That's how you'd play GoGo. Pretty simple. Weekly chart. It's also bouncing off the 100 symbol on the weekly. That's nice. That adds a little bit of a je ne sais quoi. And the monthly chart, a little bit of an inverted head and shoulders pattern, but it's kind of getting beat up some. Doesn't look that amazing. So we'll see what GoGo continues to do. And then IBM for my buddy Cabria. IBM is a sideways, is a Texas rattlesnake, but it is gapping up on earnings. Sorry, no, I'm sorry. It's not gapping up on earnings. Company taps cloud computing leader as its next CEO. Oh, okay. It's not a bad gap. Well, here's the thing. Uh, last time it gapped up, it sold off. So I would assume it would do the exact same thing again. Gap up to 143, trade a little bit higher, and then fill the gap, and then bounce. If it did it once, it probably will do it again. I do like the gap up, you know, the weekly chart, it doesn't look bad. And from there, it's just gonna trade a little bit sideways. This one is probably iron condorable. If you wanna throw in a nice long-term iron condor on IBM, something down here, something up here, if you can find premium on it, do it for four or five, six months maybe, and just let that thing hang out and trade sideways. Big Blue, still paying dividends, but other than that, IBM, not doing anything too sexy. Last but not least, APHA. I don't think it's gonna be any different than the other weed stocks, and it's not. Um, APHA, yeah, it looks just like all the other weed companies. So you have a best case, hopeful scenario that probably won't play out. But if it does, I mean, it's gonna be a random thing that no one's gonna know about. But uh, right now the trend is down. Bulls keep getting traps. They keep doing their best to buy and no one cares. I can say this, the weed industry right now is either the perfect spot to buy or the perfect spot not to buy. And I do not know which one it is. So I'm only in one position, which is a rural cannabis and I have a stop in place. So this is either the best time in the world to buy or the worst time to buy. I just don't know which one. Adam says, I don't like those odds. Yeah, man. I was never on board with the whole weed thing. It was too obvious. Way too obvious. Anytime everyone says the same thing and everyone's smart, I just, I wait. Plus, I'm not a weed guy. So, again, I'm not saying anything about it. I just, that's just not my thing. You know, it's all good. If you like the devil's lettuce, I mean, that's cool. Again, just not my forte. But yeah, this thing is pretty, it's, it's uh, smoking some people for sure. Cool. All right, team. That's it. That's all the time I got for today. Tomorrow is Finance Friday and your boy... Brad Reed and Blake Anderson will be holding down the ones and twos. You guys all know how the how much it costs to join. It's either time or money. If you want to join, you should join. If it's been valuable, I hope you feel like it's been valuable. Um, that's all I have to say for the day. So honestly, I'd love for you to all join Real Life Trading. About 4% of you will. And that's okay. I would love it if more of you joined. I think it's a really great place. I think there's phenomenal people. I think we have a lot of fun. I think it's entertaining and enriching and educational and helpful and full of guidance and joy and merriment and a good community. But uh, yeah, 
Set a 50% off discount for the next few hours. What do you want to look at tomorrow? Here's what I got on the list. And I'll give it to Blake and Brad and then we'll go crush it from there. Craig says, I joined this morning. Thanks, Jeremy. Oh, shoot. Gorgeous stuff, Craig. Make sure to check your inbox because we sent you a link to join Slack because I want you a part of that Slack team. So make sure to join and sign up because if you want to make a lot of money, I'll give you a hint, man. Oftentimes, a lot of people just reach out to me on Slack via direct message and go, hey, Newsom, what do you think of this trade? Or what do you think of this stock? <laughs> what do you think of this setup? Or should I buy here? Should I sell here? You know, that kind of thing. I think it's valuable. So anyway, Craig, thanks, man. I really appreciate that, dude. You're awesome. Everyone else, you're also awesome as well. Have a great night. Enjoy. I'll see you later. And until next time, love, life, love, life, and trade it. Bye.